Moment ago, you can see him dabbing at the corner of his right eye, and that gentleman with him apparently is a doctor. The assistant coaches walked out to the middle of the court, and waved at the Washington cheering section at that gentleman to come out of the stands so he could take a look at Wookie. Alongside was trainer Craig Morawaki as well, and that hurts them in a sense that they don't have that point leadership. Now, Dickow is a scoring mentality, so he's going to have to play within himself just a little bit just to get a feel of the game. Don't settle for the threes, although he's been making them with consistency. On Quincy O'Hartnett made the first free throw, and that's his first point of the NCAA tournament. Ordinarily, he gives them a bit of an offensive boost off the bench. But he did not score in the wins against Fairleigh Dickinson and Indiana. That was the path traveled by UConn to reach the Sweet 16. Dick Al, a freshman, the head to Todd McCullough. Luton, an excellent three-point shooter. Playing that one off the iron. Out of bounds to Connecticut. And you notice they're right up on him, too. They're not letting him get those open looks. Five minutes play. Connecticut by three. It's their box set. Screen down. Pop out. Shooting well, the reason for the high score early and an illegal screen called on Suleiman Juan. Let's check in with Andrea Joyce. All right, Sean, Jan Wooten did sustain an eye injury. He is in the locker room right now. Team doctor Steve Bramwell is stitching it up. It's a cut over his right eyebrow. He says he will be back in, though. Jan Wooten, the key. According to Coach Bob Bender, the starting point guard, senior from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Dickow tried to feed Thalo Green. Kevin Freeman knocked it away. McCullough waited for Juan to jump and go down and then scored over him. He's got a little finesse in there, doesn't he? Not an overpowering post player, but has a good feel. Five points for McCullough. He averages 18.6 per game. He's coming off a 31-point, 18-rebound game against Richmond in Washington's second-round victory. Rochamel Jones off the bench, the bounce to the bucket, 4-2. And you can see McCullough just can't react that extra step across the lane. Good blow-by by Jones. Michael Johnson, a freshman, is on the court now for Washington, number 23. And they haven't looked in there. And he's in McCullough's, oh, nice look by Green. Watch the chance for a three-point play. And Thalo uh, didn't sneak a peek at McCullough, but he certainly had pretty good vision under the rim. And all the scramble defensively by UConn backfires. They're trying to harass the passer. And you can see the little slippage as Moore tries to recover. And watch one of those talented performers who's grown in his confidence, I think, under Bobby Bender. Watch with a chance to tie the game. Again, we remind those of you expecting to see Maryland and Arizona. The tip is at 10:29, and we'll get you there in time for the start of that ball game. Give you the date on what's going on here. Nearly six and a half minutes in. It's Connecticut by one. Howard Elamin, along with the pull-up, Boston fortunate to avoid a foul. I got Bob Bender off the bench. Uh, he is aggressive. Got a piece of that one. They didn't give him the foul. Rochamel Jones with the basket for the Huskies of Connecticut. Bad pass. Picked off by Hardnett. Hamilton right on the floor. And Sean, he made that play. He was below the foul line, Richard Hamilton. Scores can sniff it out. I got a chance for a deuce. Let me get the puppies down the floor. Didn't look like the head coach that caused Hamilton to miss the workout yesterday it was bothering him that time as he sprinted the length of the court. It's a good remedy, though. Two points for a head coach. Green lobbed it into McCullough. And he was fouled before the shot, says Zelton Steed. It's on Monquencio Hartnett, his first. Now well, you're going to see the great effort now, the ability to get out, and it's all off of defense. Connecticut, just solid understanding. Here's the steal, and Richard, the ability to get down the floor. I mean, this makes the break. Otherwise, it's a one-man break and a balanced floor, but just terrific anticipation by the three, and he just understands offense and how to get out there, and that's what they do. They concentrate defensively and get some open looks. Donald Watts didn't get the left-handed layup to go. The other seven-footer. Patrick Fenneling now on the floor. Number 22 for Washington. And the Huskies will play it in along the 
sideline by the UConn bench. Interesting now with Clayburg goes into the game to play Femerly. Uh, McCullough gets a blow. You don't want to waste a foul on Voskel. Answer Clayburg, number 22. Checking the other 22. Femerly. Dick out. He got knocked down after releasing that three. Seven and a half minutes played. Connecticut by five. And they've got to this one center approach. It's been effective. Johnson short with it. A long rebound out to Montfonzio Hardnett. LME acrobatic. Oh, is that pretty. Put it on the floor, he might charge. Just a slide by a belly. Great control of the upper body. First basket for the freshman from Minneapolis, Khaled el with 30 points in round one against Fairleigh Dickinson, 22 against Indiana. Connecticut on fire to start the game. Eight out of 10 from the floor, and a push on Claver. His first. The open floor, Sean, it's Connecticut's game. The push, the finish, the little kiss, the little guy on fire. Where's your father? You don't want to know. Here he comes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Watch out, Dad! Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Here he comes. Hey, it's Chevy Venture with a remote control door. Pretty convenient, huh? Oh, Dad. Why? Chevy Venture. Let's go. Good idea. If you've been getting those phone stickers, you may be getting a little confused. So allow me to simplify. I love stickers. Okay, but if you're calling anywhere in America or anywhere around the world, most calls from home will cost you less with AT&T One Rate and One Rate International. So you're saying the sticker. I'm saying if you use those stickers, you can get a little sticky. You might get stuck paying more with those stickers. Yeah, I know, I got that. But I love stickers. Never been more frightened in my life. In America and around the world, the AT&T One Rate plans. You sign a lot of autographs? Oh, yeah, you? It's, um, they asked me to bend stuff a lot. I can see that. What? It's Lois. She's in trouble. Did you look through that building? Well, kind of. It's glass. Lois! Superman, I've forgotten my wallet. I can't carry money in this. I'm powerless. I'm not. Why? And UConn's done a nice job keeping it a perimeter game with dribble drive. Leon Luton stripped to the ball by Montrecio Hartnett. He's been a lift off the Connecticut bench. Freeman, offensive foul, no basket. Uh, Jim Calhoun up pretty quick on that one. Uh, Freeman, you, he gets a little body on somebody. They're going down. Montrecio provides that spark. You noted he hadn't scored in the NCAA until this evening, but defensively usually gets them going. Foul on Freeman, seventh team foul, so it is a bonus situation, but because it was a player control foul, no shooting for Washington. Great double in New York, as Sean McDonough was saying. Tip off is coming up shortly out in Anaheim between Maryland and Arizona. We'll keep you abreast of what happens between Washington and Yukon, but right now, those of you awaiting the number one seed, Arizona against Maryland, let's go to Gus Johnson and John Sundberg. From the Arrowhead Pond in Anaheim, California, it's the West Regional Semifinals, second game of the night. Fourth seeded Maryland against the number one seeded Arizona Wildcats. And the bracket here in the West, Utah advancing. And a white knuckler over West Virginia, they face the winner of Arizona and Maryland. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Anaheim. Gus Johnson along with John Sunvold. And the Maryland Terrapins this season, they played some of their best basketball against top teams. They beat North Carolina. They beat Kansas when each team was ranked number one in the nation. One reason for their success, LaRon Profit. Yeah, Profit, one of the best athletes in college basketball. 6'6", six, six, about 195. Very good defender, very good finisher. If his jump shot is on, he is oh so effective. 
Meanwhile, for Arizona, they're trying to become the first team since Duke in 91 and 92 to repeat as national champions. The reason they're so good, they've got a dynamic backcourt. Yeah, no kidding. Let's start with Mike Bibby. Bibby, probably the best lead guard in college basketball. Smart player, tough player, knows how to knock in big shots, how to make huge plays. His partner, first team All-American also, is Miles Simon. Last year's MVP in the Final Four. Scores in a hurry. This guy, this group is a dynamic duel. They like to push it up the floor. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineup. We start with the lower-seeded Terrapins. Obina Akizi, 6'10 junior from Nigeria. His play has improved constantly this season. Take a look at him in the low post. And they're coached by Gary Williams. Ninth season at Maryland. He's led three different teams to the NCAAs. Boston College, Ohio State, and his alma mater, Maryland. Meanwhile, for the Arizona Wildcats, you know about Bibby and Simon, but Michael Dickerson, he leads them in scoring close to 19 points per game. And they're coached by Lute Olsen. In his 15th season at Arizona, won the national championship last season. Four trips to the Final Four. Now let's join the third member of our team, Armin Katea. You know, Gus, it's just incredibly loud down here, but moments ago I spoke to both coaches. Lute Olsen said, we have to play like the national champions, the team that's the number one team in the nation. Gary Williams sounded a very similar theme. He said, we have to play like a team that beat the number one teams in the nation. We have to live up to that number one ranking on the floor. Back to you. All right, Armin, and the officials for today's game, James Burr, Gene Manje, and Ted Valentine. A serious veteran crew this evening in the series note. Their last meeting, 1963, Arizona winning it 57-54. So Arizona with the great backcourt, Dibby, Simon, and Dickerson, he's also pretty much a guard. Yeah, pretty much a guard. They go three guard set. They're pressured to see the smile on Bibby's face. This crowd is at a fever pitch in the atmosphere. This is going to be a high octane type of ball game. Maryland's going to have to control it just a little bit more than they normally do because you don't want Arizona to get out and run. They are oh so special, and they'll get after you early. And Gary Williams has made a living knocking off top-ranked teams. He said to his team to motivate them, hey, if it was the NBA, you'd have to win the best out of seven. But in one game, in one game, you can play with anybody. Let's see. And this is a team that understands it. You said they mentioned beat Kansas. They beat North Carolina. They do not have, they do not fear this Arizona team. Ron Crawford, who's been in a small shooting slump. And the clock is not running as we begin this one. Not a good start for the players because they have nervous energy. They want to play. The things got started. Now they have to do it again. See how much time they take off the clock. That's Ted Valentine at the scorer's table. And a sold out crowd. At the pond, a lot of fans from Arizona made the trip to Southern California. And as we always understand, when you have neutral sites, most of the other fans that aren't Arizona will start pulling for Maryland. Stokes gives up his dribble, guarded by Bibby. Akizi was it on the floor, got down the lane, kicked it out around the alien. And it's ripped down by Dickerson. And Wildcats with a man-to-man -man defense, that's what they'll play most of the ball game. Simon crossing over. So good off penetration are Bibby, Simon, and Dickerson. You have to contain Terrapins in themselves, man-to-man -man defensively. Arizona 29 and 4. 17 and 1 in the back 10. Simon across the lane. Let it go. And and it. Good start. Maybe the most confident of players you'll find at the collegiate level. Has an air of cockiness to him, but that's what gets him through ball games. Senior from Fullerton, California. Averages 17 on the season. Yes, a Kavishis. And a rebound to Dickerson. And Gary Williams said yesterday, we have to shoot the ball well. Bibby cut off by Akizi. Simon hops inside. Got his man in the air, but travels. How about Simon's first step? It's quick, it's explosive. You have to stay on your feet and be ready. Yes, Akavich is late getting out there, and there's the hop inside. Maryland, though, 0 of 2 to start off. 
Maryland, they want to play half-court basketball with Arizona, but as Gary Williams said, we have to hit shots to do that, and they turn it over. Well, yes, Akavich just picked up his dribble in the corner. And again, we always talk about the quickness of Arizona on the offensive end. They're as quick and quicker on the defensive end. They make it awfully difficult for teams defensively. Mike Bibby. Simon not ready for the ball. Here is Stokes. Straight to the basket. And he missed, but the tip in goes for Laurent Profit. Well, Simon was busy visiting with the officials. Did not know the ball was in play, but great hustle by Profit for the follow. Mike Bibby, conference player of the year in the Pac-10. Bramlett posting up inside. The jump hook goes, but a foul on the floor. Well, Akizi cannot let himself be pushed under that far. Bramlett got in low post position. Take a look. Simon uh, discussing with Jim Burr over there. Mike Bibby looked at him like, come on, we need you in this ball game early. Michael Dickerson off the inbound, blocked by Profit, and out of bounds. Profit quick enough to get into the shot line of most shooters. Again, 6'6", six, six, long arms, good reach. Simon, one dribble. Dickerson, offensive rebound. In and out. Another rebound. Davison, and he jams in the zero-footer. The quickness of the feet, Gus, the jump. They get up in a hurry. Almost a steal. Simon anticipated. No look. Elliott changed his shot, got it back, and is fouled. What a pass by Yeser Kavichus. He has been the guy that has shot the ball so well. Last five ball games, 56% from beyond the three. That time he used his shot fake to make the pass inside. Arizona up by two, 17.46 to go in the first half of play. Yakizi. Maryland, the number four seed. Arizona, the number one seed. Turks, 21 and 10. 10 and 6 in the ACC. Akizi unable to make the catch and out of bounds. Maybe a dribble to the right, and then the bounce pass has to be harder so that ball kicks up to the waist area. You keep it down below the knee, that's hard for a big guy to handle. Inside, almost stolen away. Dickerson guarded by Profit. Bramlett posting up, leans in, and threw it away. Yes, a Cavitris. Inside, Akizi. Baseline jump shot and a foul. Akizi, who has improved his footwork all year long, and he mentioned it to you today the fact that went to Bill Walton's school this summer on footwork. He learned a lot, but this guy has improved. A great low post player. Bramlett's going to bot him a little bit. You see the push with the lower part, and Akizi goes to the foul line where he shoots about 68%. So Abina Akizi, junior from Nigeria, has only been playing basketball for five years. So having a chance to work with Bill Walton really got his confidence up. He worked on his footwork. He worked on his spacing as well. He said, when somebody's in there banging me, Mr. Walton showed me how to go away and then come back. Well, there weren't many better than Big Red on the footwork down low on the block. Got the second one to go, four to three. Here's a Maryland pressure. Dickerson down low, Bramley, great catch, got it up, and in. Boy, the catch, the hang, very athletic, the big guys. Not really physical, but their quickness in the passing, they handle the pressure easy. Six three. Elliott, the senior from Baltimore, Dunbar. Oh, he got the step to the cup off the glass. Came up short. Yes, the Cavages dumps it down. Drop it again. Had it blocked. That's Davison. And Simon. What quickness. Dickerson to the basket. He got it to fall. Trying to make an exclamation point. This Wildcat team quick off their feet defensively. But Maryland has to convert. Gosh, they had a couple easy looks before the block. The defending national champion started the season 7-3. Profit inside. Triple team. Forced it up. Akizi gets it. You get a feeling they're playing like they're in a hurry for some reason. Arizona will do that. They will take you out of your natural rhythm. Akizi. Draws a double team. Backside, yes, the Kavichus. Let it go for three. And Davison with the ball. 8-3, Arizona. Simon, 
Bramley. Bibby around the screen, fade away, count it. What a tough shot. Bibby caught off guard. He was going to cut the pass, and all of a sudden he had to change with his thought process, knocked in the jump shot. Arizona fans on their feet. Here they come. Mike Bibby, sophomore from Phoenix. Elliott. And that quiets him down a bit. Good basket by the senior. This is the leader of the ball club. Usually answers when needed. 10-6, Arizona. 15-07 to go. Davidson, ball three. And Elliott is called for the foul. Well, Davison and Bramlett are not very physical and strong, 215 and 220 pounds, but they're quick with what they do. 15.04 to go, 10-6 Wildcats. There it is, a win for the ages. Bet you Bud Light, my friend here can beat you from the field and still only leading by five points. Well, their defense isn't solid enough. This Washington Huskies team is a very good offensive team with McCullough's presence inside, Watson, Luton on the outside. They've got guys who can score, and there's McCullough doing work inside. UConn's going to have to step up their defense. Otherwise, it's just going to be a matter of which team can outscore the other, and Washington would like that kind of game, I think. Meanwhile, Donald Watts with 12 points for the Washington Huskies, and L.A doing his magic in the backcourt for Utah. He really is a freshman that has tremendous poise and moxie beyond his years in addition to excellent basketball skills. Winner of this game moves on to play North Carolina on Saturday. There's an offensive foul and they'll take it the other way. So four and a half minutes to play in Greensboro. We'll be taking you out there again, but right now let's send you back to Anaheim. Gus Johnson, John Singer. 14.33 to go in the first half. Arizona, 12-6, Bramlett on the baseline. And a lot of intensity on the floor for both teams right now, but Maryland unable to find a rhythm, no rhythm right now for the Terrapins. And what they have to do defensively, Gus, is the big guys, when they, Simon or someone goes up, you have to know where your teammate is. Because Simon and Bibby, they go up for the shot, but they pass it down low, and that's catching the big players for Maryland off guard. Akizi leaves with two fouls. <laughs> Mike Martisic into the game for the Turks, as well as Jason Terry for Arizona. Simon inside, feeding the post, turns it over. Yes, the Kavichis, straight to the basket, and he can't lay it in. Yeah. Knocked out of bounds, we head the other way. Yeah, and they have to finish those. They're now 2 of 12 from the field, Maryland, and a couple have been easy attempts right around the rim. But you don't shy away from continuing to take it to the glass. Yes, a Cavitus will uh, continue to look for his. Terry popping out, guarded by Profit. Skip pass to Bibby. Wants to take him off the dribble, cut to the basket, double clutch. Here come the Turks with numbers. Profit in the open court, slid to the hole, and a rebound by Bramley. And he made that so difficult. Four on one. Inside and a miss by Davison. And Profit stops, let it go, and count it. So I think that's his problem. He's too close. <laughs> well, he made the last one too difficult, and now Arizona comes right back at you. You can't hesitate, Gus. If you score, you better get back, turn around, and find the ball. And that's what Gary Williams said yesterday. They kill you even more after you make baskets. Watch the four-on-one break. Really what you want is a two-on-one. Anytime you give it to a trainer, that allows the defender who's back to just stand and hold his ground. He's been involved in the play. And now Profit comes down and answers with a three. So Miles Simon at the free throw line. Most viable player of the NCAA Final Four last year. And Simon is wearing the same shoes that he wore when he was the MVP. Hadn't worn them until the beginning of this year's NCAA tournament. Had to break them out and well, give them magic. If they work one year, they uh, may work this year. There's his dad, Walt. Must be proud of his son. Second free throw is good. 13.30 to go. In the first half, 14-9, Arizona leads Maryland. Jason Terry, Eugene Edgerson in for Arizona. They'll now put full-court pressure. Terry, one of the top defensive players. Great catch, Profit. Looked like a wide receiver there, cross-court. Terry with the steal. 
Well, what athletic ability to get back in the play. Better pick him up. And he lets the three go. Rebounded inside by Crawford. In a hurry. Stokes. Elliott. Got of bounds by Eugene Edgerson. Maryland is a team that likes to push and likes to get early shots, but in this type of ball game, if they don't have it, they want the Wildcats to play defense for at least 20 seconds. Terrell Stokes takes a seat. Matt Kavarik, fifth-year senior into the game, along with Terrence Morris, Martisic, Profit, and Rodney Elliott. Kavarik, a solid player, does not shoot much, has to handle the ball against Terry. Elliott chasing it out of bounds, and he touched it last. And LaRon Profit, 2 of 8. Maryland, overall, 3 of 15. Here comes the press. Pressure has not been very effective against Arizona all year long. You have Bibby, Simon, Terry. They can all handle the basketball, Dickerson. Bibby. Dickerson. Edgerson kicks it back. Terry. Bibby. Unselfish basketball. And Arizona on top 17 to 9. Timeout on the floor. Gary Williams, a little frustrated for good reason. And the Microsoft Data Bank. Maryland is one of only two ACC teams to have played in the last five consecutive NCAA tournaments. They're joined by North Carolina. Tar Heels have been in 24 straight, but watch the ball movement and unselfish play by this Arizona team. It had gone outside, inside, back out. Terry passes up a shot, frees up Mike Bibby, who calmly knocks in a three. That is how you win national championships. Share the ball, get the open shot, and when the guy is open, you knock it in there, seven to 13 to start this game off from the field. And a steal by Bibby. Inside, Eckerson got it away and is fouled. Active hands again. You can't have mental mistakes against this team. There's the pass, Bibby, quickness to the ball. Doesn't look like he has anything here. Double team, but Edgerson kind of bails him out and then gets fouled going up. Eugene Edgerson, sophomore from New Orleans. Not the first one to go, and he shoots 69%. Some people will forget the fact that Edgerson was solid last year in the Final Four. Five rebounds against North Carolina, five rebounds against Kentucky. 6'6 body who brings activity. A great rebounder for this ball club. Second free throw, also good. Largest lead of the game for the Wildcats, 19-9. And now they get into a full court press. They have to have players come back and meet the ball and want the basketball. Terrence Morris, Elliott locked in out of bounds. No easy shots for the Terrapins. 11.57 to go, 19-9 Arizona. Like a rock. Hey, when are you going to buy a new truck and uh, sell me this one? You know, you deserve a new truck, man. Oh, come on, man. You know, I've been asking you for years. How much you want for it? You know, ballpark, what do you think? I mean, you going to keep it forever? Come on. Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. I think I might know someone who can take it off your hands for you. Really? I admit it. I don't like to take risks. That's why a Maryland Protected Growth Investment is right for my IRA. In effect, I'm investing in the stock market, but I get the earning potential of a rising market without risking all my principal, even if stocks decline dramatically. My Merrill Lynch financial consultant recommended protected growth for my retirement because he knows I like to play it safe. With my money, that is. When one is competing for the eye of the judges, one must keep a firm leash on odor and perspiration. Thus, right guard, clear stick or clear gel. Powerful protection that glides on clear to make sure odor and wetness obey. Okay, boys, we're on. Come on. 
The critics are raving about the man in the iron mask. A big, bold adventure from a top-notch cast. The movie delivers just what you want. Great fun from start to finish. The Man in the Iron Mask. Rated PG-13. Now playing. Enterprise, rent a car for my trip? Looks expensive. It's not expensive, Mom. They pick us up? Sounds expensive. Pickup's free, Mom. Well, if it's not expensive, why didn't I get a convertible? Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Terrorists hijack a Navy ship. Cuban liberators bent on assassination. You're gonna kill hundreds to take out one man? All new. Shag. CBS Tuesday. The academic all-stars recognize one player on each team. For academic excellence for today's game, the all-stars are Abina Akizi from Maryland and Michael Dickerson for Arizona. Akizi, a junior majoring in engineering, and Michael Dickerson, a senior majoring in psychology. You know, Keezy on the bench with two fouls. 11.57 to go, 19-9. Turks need a couple of baskets. Martisic. For Terry. No man's land. And Off Terry five seconds. denying the bar at the basketball. Elliott for three. Inside, and a rebound goes to the Wildcats. Maryland. Having problem scoring points, and the freshman, Terrence Morris, with the rebound. Terrapin, 3 of 17 from the field. Martisic. Elliott stolen away. Donnell Harris. Terry lost it on the floor. Squirts out, and Morris picks it up. Martisic. And finally, good stroke, and Martisus has to score a few baskets with Akizi out of the lineup. Freshman from Boston, Massachusetts. One of the big keys for this team, as you mentioned, off the bench. And Maryland now, 3-2 zone defense. They'll spread across out top to try to deny the long shots. Edgerson inside, and he draws the bump. In that zone, though, Gus, you're going to have to be able to contain Simon, Terry, and Dickerson. Don't let them penetrate that zone by the dribble. Foul on Rodney Elliott is second. And it's the sixth team foul against Maryland. 10.53 to go, 19 to 11. Arizona, the number one seed, against the Terps, the number four seed out of the ACC. Arizona from the Pac 10. They stay in the zone. Akizi has to be careful. Doesn't pick up another foul. Simon. Terry. Dickerson offensively. Step. No. Quiet and he drops. Yeah, I thought he took a step. Good call. And a 20-second timeout has been called by Lou Olson. And you can tell by the look on his face, he's not happy with what he's seeing. Well, taking a look probably on the offensive end against that zone defense. He wants to get them organized, make sure they all understand where they are. And Coach Olsen, his team forcing Maryland in the 4 of 18 shooting. Arizona, they're 7 of 14. So Arizona, the number one seed, the third time they've been a number one facing Maryland for the first time since 1963. Here come the Turks, Stokes back into the game with Elliott, Akizi, Yesikavichus, and Profit. The line. That's what they need as well. Bingo, Profit on the baseline. They got a back screen. Yesikavichus put it right on the money. Right out of the timeout. Laron Profit with seven. Dickerson. No made off the front of the rim. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Arizona. Good break for Maryland. Akizi could have picked up another personal foul, but take a look. The set play out of the timeout. Yes, Akavich is up. Anywhere near the rim will work for Leron Profit. Maryland beat Utah State in the first round. Then beat Illinois. Profit down the baseline. Stokes reversed it. About the recovery by the Wildcat team. They help on the baseline. They get back to the shooters. Maryland thought they might have an easy attempt. Now they have nothing. 
and a steal. A.J. Bramlett just taking it away from Yessa Kavitsis, and he commits the foul. Frustration foul. Made the turnover. Compounded one mistake by making another one. 17 foul against Maryland. One and one for Arizona. As for the Wildcats, it's been an easy road for them so far here in the NCAAs. They beat Nichols State 99 to 60, then Illinois State 82 to 49. Mike Bibby gets the first to go. And this is a team of runs. Illinois State, they put it, it was tie ball game in the second half at 32, and Arizona went on a 27-2 run. Bibby had a wisdom tooth pulled on Monday. It was in the weight room later that night. Amazing. He has seven points, 21 to 13, under 10 to play in the first half. West Regional semifinal. Arizona, the number one seed, and Maryland. The number four seed. Straight man-to-man -man Maryland now with a little bit better spacing to allow for the cuts to be more open and the shots to become better. Goffin with the rebound, power dribble, got it up quick and banked it off the glass hard. Ron Profit with nine. Terrapin staying in that 3-2 zone. Should not be a problem, though, for Arizona to at least penetrate it by dribble or pass, plus they have effective outside shooting. Bramlett, Bibby, baseline jump shot. Too strong, Crawford with the rebound. And he wanted a foul. There he is, 21 footer. Maybe a bad shot. Yeah, not in sync. Crawford hit a couple ones inside, and he took that one a little early. It is physical down low. This is against the zone, and Bibby misses. Watch Profit go high. Thought he was bumped. Good no call by the official. And a steal. And Davison, fortunately, jumped on it, and the possession arrow favors the Wildcats. And anytime you take it from the side out of bounds against Maryland, you have to expect traps. They will get after the ball. Once it's inbounds, they will trap the guy who receives it. You have to be alert. But the question is, why would you trap a team like Arizona with three great guards? Well, one thing you do is catch them off surprise by surprise. I mean, Arizona already has six turnovers on the ball game. It's not as if these guys are professional. Speed them up a little bit, catch them off guard once in a while, change your defenses. If you sit back, they'll pick you apart worse. 21-15, Maryland. And there's a trap right away. Trailing, but they're remaining true to their game. Continuing the trap. Three-quarter court. Bibby around the screen. And Crawford with the rebound. Well, the 3-2 zone is working effective. Sixth rebound for Crawford. mckeesey has been offensively quiet. Elliott, cut off, backs up, let it fly. Bibby with the ball. Zona in transition. Bibby and Simon in a reach in. Textbook two on one break. Ball doesn't touch the floor when it got past half court. Simon and Bibby, two first team All Americans. Watch the rebound. As Bibby looks up, he has a teammate on his right. They make it a two on one play to make the defender on the back make a decision one way or the other that Stokes picks up a foul. Mike Bibby at the line. First free throw is good. He is the son of Henry Bibby, the former UCLA Bruin and NBA player who now coaches at USC. And it's been well documented that uh, Bibby and his son have no relationship. That was his mom, Virginia. Michael letting it be known that he was raised by his mother. His father did not have an active role. Not the foul that Lou Olson wanted. They were in full court pressure again. Maryland had a little bit of time to get it inbounds. Nobody's coming back to the basketball. 23-15. Eight minutes to go in the first half. 23-15. Arizona. And a traveling violation called against... Martisich, 7.54 to go. Arizona on cruise control. At NEC, it's not a box. 
It's a door. A door to the latest in computer technology, built to your exact specifications. A door to improve product support, including on-site repairs. A door to more flexible leasing. If you're looking for a better ownership experience, enter here. Award-winning NEC desktop PCs feature the Intel Pentium 2 processor. Order your customized computer now. the best western located close to the basketball hall of fame best western across the street from ordinary they're not exactly a well-organized i've never helped run a presidential campaign before neither have we well-oiled i got some slave in me you're crazy machine mister you're about to become mrs this is gonna be rough but that's their secret we're gonna make history john travolta emma thompson billy bob thornton kathy bates maura tierney and adrian lester from the director of the birdcage get me out you just threw the phone out the window. Primary Colors. Can I sleep here? No. A Mike Nichols film. Rated R. Starts tomorrow at theaters everywhere. <laughs> but I've risen to hear As man and woman Is to love each other Take care of each other When love walks in the room Everybody stand up. Dockers khakis, one leg at a time. Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, I just won the lottery. I think I should get my books done. Done. We've had them done. The CBS Network premiere. It could happen to you. CBS Sunday. And welcome back to Anaheim. The game summary. Maryland struggling from the field. Six of 23. 26%. Arizona only shooting 41%. Yeah, and they've only made three of their last nine against his own defense, but the huge difference, and it's kept Maryland somewhat close, is 8 of 8 from the foul line. So Gary Williams. Trying to get his team motivated to hit baskets. He said, we got to hit shots and play half court defense in this one. Yeah, token full court pressure. They go back to the 3-2 zone. Again, Arizona's only made three of their last nine shots after the hot start. Pivy for three. That'll kill you. Yeah, bingo. Two of two beyond the three-point line on the night for Mike Bibby. He has 12 already. 26 to 15. Martisic. And they turn it over. Maybe again with the steal. Their quickness forces you to hurry yourself. Dickerson this time. And the seventh re rebound for Laron Profit. 7 8 to play, 26-15. How do you get a couple of easy baskets against Well, Stokes has to be more efficient and effective with his dribble. If he just stands around, he's not an outside shooter. Bibby can play center field. It's like playing four on five. He has to take it off the dribble and penetrate that man to man defense at times. Yes, the Cabbages. There's Stokes wide open. Nice stroke there. He had his best game of the year against Illinois in the last win. In the second round of the tournament, 10 points and 7 assists, was 4 of 9 from the field. So they're going to allow him to shoot that shot. He has to convert. Junior from Philadelphia. Made with Rashid Wallace at Simon Gratz High School in Philly. Davis in cross court. Bibby again. And that's smooth. Man. Butter. 29-18. Arizona. Mike Bibby. 15 points in the first half. Any, any doubt that he's the first team All-American and the reason why he's there? Stokes trying to answer and he does. It's around. And that's a confident look on his face. to recognize where Bibby will go against this zone. So good with the basketball, so good without it. Dickerson. Davis in a rebound and 
putback. How about the quickness to the rebound? Davison looked like he was blocked out by Martisic and simply spun him. The quickness of the catch and the release before he landed on the ground. Bennett Davison. Lob, dropped it again, knocked away by Bramlett. Number Jimmy in transition, the lob, and there's a 35 in front of him. Well, Mike Bibby has been the guy against this zone defense. He knocks in a bomb. He said 15 points on the night. He's feeling good. Here's the offensive rebound, the spin, and take a look as Davison goes around the tip in. Now you want to know what a good point guard does? Throw it anywhere in the vicinity and the finish. 12 points, the largest lead of the game for Arizona. And it's been all that guy. Mike Bibby is three-point shooting, steals, as well as finding players on the break. 15 points for Michael. 33 to 21, approaching the five-minute mark of the first half. Arizona back to that man-to-man -man defense. They went to a zone one time. Big basket. Elliott strokes it. You have to end these little runs. 4.50 to go. Mike Bibby just taking over this game with 15 points in the first half. He's hit three straight threes. And look at how stretched out this zone becomes because of the outside shooting ability of this Wildcat team. The middle of that paint is wide open. Bibby trying to shake up Morris, the freshman. Simon for three. Moose ball, Elliott with the rebound. And you can bother Simon on his jumper, Gus, because he shoots it from his forehead. And so when a hand comes up, that either rushes it or makes him arch it a lot more than he would like to. Morris pops out. Off the glass! Ah, he's got a big smile on his face. <laughs> you better have a smile on your face hitting that one, son. That's a great play. Terry, the other end. Don't rest. You knock one in, they come right back at you, and Stokes thought he was on a roll. Wildcat Simon down the lane, hung in the air, and he got the roll. Best thing about Miles Simons is the body control. When he gets in the lane, it looks like he may float a little too much or charge somebody. He knows how to stop on a dime. He has enough body control to knock in the shot. Back door, out of bounds. But one thing about Simon, we talked about his release, but he's got a great in-between game. And here's the freshman, Terrence Morris, from Frederick, Maryland. And that was by design. But Miles Simon, he can get in deep and make the pay. Uh, we make ice cream. I know very little about computers. I'm an, I'm an idea guy. I'm not a computer guy. Me, computers. I'm the guy that dreams up the flavors. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Computer cream? That'd be really cool. Get, get it? I'm really into ice cream, and I need someone who's as good at computers as I am at ice cream. I'm a hands-on ice cream guy. Not literally. I admit it. I don't like to take risks. That's why Maryland's protected growth investment is right for my IRA. In effect, I'm investing in the stock market, but I get the earning potential of a rising market without risking all my principal, even if stocks decline dramatically. My Merrill Lynch financial consultant recommended protected growth for my retirement because he knows I like to play it safe. With my money, that is. Staff Utah, though, they also advanced to the Elite Eight, knocking off West Virginia. Waiting for the winner of this ball game. Akizi, double team, spins baseline, cut off, finds Stokes, extra pass, Elliott. Offensive rebound, yes, a Kavichis. And he tried to lay it off to Morris, knocked out of bounds, off of Morris's knee. Yeah, good double team down low by Arizona. Kizzi could not get a good look. Here's the rebound by Yessa Kavichis. Watch the nice bounce pass. Morris going up, off his leg. Good active hands, look like Mike Bibby again. Simon, wheels, no look pass, knocked away by Akizi. Stokes, into the front court. Bounce pass, Elliott. 
Elliott, and he has to hold on to that thing. Again, that ball doesn't bounce up high enough, Gus. In fact, you got to put some mustard on that bounce pass to get it up above the waist so the big guy can catch it. He had to reach down below the waist, couldn't get a hold of it. Anytime you're throwing to a big guy running, that ball is too low, hits him in the knee, hard to bend down and pick it up. Turks hold on. Yes, the Kavichus inbounding. They need to get him going offensively to Elliott and the five. This guy is the warrior for Maryland. From Baltimore Dunbar. Some great players have come out of that program. Reggie Lewis. Keith Booth and the likes, and here he is inside. Strong move inside against the man-to-man, -man, but Yesikavich is very good with the pass. He sees the whole floor. He saw Elliott cutting. Finally gets a touch, only three of ten from the field. Finally got one to drop. Muncy Bogues, David Wingate, all going to Dunbar, and Rodney Elliott adds the free throw, 35-29. He has eight. Maryland refusing to go away. And token full court pressure, Mike Bibby handles it. Maryland is a pressing type team in the regular season. Bibby again, four for four from the three-point line. Oh, is he on a roll? 38 to 29, 236 to go. You have to find a Kizu once in a while in this post. Stokes deep in the corner. And a listen and foul. You don't think Mike Bibby's hot? He breaks the pressure by himself. When he kicks the ball out, watch the smart play, though, by his teammate Terry. Jason Terry says, I know who's hot. Give it back to the teammate. This is a guy on fire. Doesn't even look like he breaks a sweat when he plays. Back 10 player of the year. 19 points against Nickel State, 19 against Illinois State. And right now, Mike Bibby with 18. And the thing about it, Jason Terry, a lot of teammates forget about who's hot on their squad. Jason Terry caught the ball. He could have shot it or could have gone the other way, but he understood Bibby coming back along the baseline, give it to him. Maryland didn't react, didn't find him. It's one guy you better match up right when he gets past half court. Second free throw by Donnell Harris. Makes it a 40-29 game. 2-2-1 two, two, pressure now by Arizona, but they back off. They initially put pressure on. Once you get it in, they seem to back off and set in their man-to-man -man defense. Arizona's largest lead, 12 points. Yes, a Kavichus. 0 of 3, very quiet, and he came in this ballgame, the hottest of the Terrapins. Kind of similar to what Utah did to Pat Bradley last week in Boise. Stokes for the shoot. Barely grazed the rim. Terry with the ball. And they have numbers. There he is. Pull yes. up at the counted line. A runner too strong. Stokes with the rebound. He's got somebody with the freshman. Terrence Morris jams it in. Recognition point guard. Throw it around the rim. Morris very athletic. Went over Simon. Honorable mention all freshman team in the ACC. 40 to 31. And they have stretched this zone wide to wide. Good block by Profit. Yes, a Cavitus with teammates. Jump stop to Profit. Got it back underneath. Knocked out of bounds. That should have been a foul. He got mugged inside. No whistle. Take a look at the break. Stokes looks over his left shoulder to see who's coming. Knows it's Terrence Morris. Put it up around the rim. I love a point guard hesitating at the half court, taking a look, finding which teammate is running with you. Good decision, good finish. Stokes to Morris. Let it go for three. Yes, the Cavett just kept it alive, but Harris with the board. Eckerson all alone in the front court. Now he gets it on the block. Block from behind, out of bounds, and last touch by the Wildcats. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Dean Smith, a lot to talk about the NCAA tournament. And Maryland doesn't have anybody to take the ball out. Gus, two opportunities for Arizona. They had a three-on-one break, and that time, 
Edgerson was ahead of the crowd and didn't give it to him. They've missed two easy opportunities. Big basket. Basket here would be big for them. Yeah, for confidence set factor. Inside Crawford. Triple team, no call again as it's knocked out of bounds. And one more pass and Morris has a dunk. Profit goes, he's got three guys. Just put a little wraparound bounce pass. Nobody's on Terrence Morris underneath. 18 seconds on the shot clock. 41 game clock, Akizi inside, and there's a whistle. Good catch by Akizi again. The valuable guy taking it out of bounds is Jesse Cabbages. Hasn't shot the ball well, but understandably so. Why he takes it out, he is finding the cutters to the basket from underneath. Only five team fouls against Arizona. Jesse Cabbages to Stokes. Lined it up. Profit with the rebound, and he got it on the baseline. Shot clock off, Gus. 40 to 33. Profit, 11 first half points. Maryland needs a good defensive stand here. They'll stay in the zone, and on the top of that zone is Terrence Morris at 6'8". Long arms, long reach. And look at Gary Williams on the bench. He is fired up. Boy, they flatten that zone out, let Bibby go to work one-on-one. -on -one. To Dickerson. Baseline jumper. Got it. With 1.5 to go, Stokes. Shooting first half for Dickerson, but boy, he answered one right there. Three of nine, he has six points, but it's been Mike Dickey with 18. Mike Bibby, I'm sorry. They flatten everybody out and watch Dickerson come baseline, and then he'll go take his man. This is a tough, tough jump shot. That's the end of the first half of play. As Gary Williams can't believe Dickerson nailed the jump shot. Here's Armin Katayan. Mood, you got 18 from Bibby, but you only got 10 from Dickerson total with Miles. Yeah, uh, well, Mike, Mike Dean's got to catch the ball, ready to shoot the ball. And we've got their defense spread out all over the court the way we want it. We've just got to do a better job of penetrating into the gaps and then finding the open man from there. But uh, defensively, overall, we're doing a good job. We just need to uh, attack a little bit more on the offensive end. Thanks, Luke. You're Back welcome. to you guys. All right, Armin, the story in the first half, Mike Bibby, 18 points, 4 of 4 from the three-point line. Arizona leads it 42-33. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Somewhere, some poor slob's punching a time clock. He don't know what he's missing. Come on, get up, son. We got to go. got to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Meanwhile, uh, they're into action in the second half out in Greensboro between uh, number 11 Washington Huskies, the number two Yukon Huskies, 54-46. Let's join Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery. 15-45 remaining. Connecticut leads by eight, matching its largest lead. Jake Voskel has just been called for a second foul for Connecticut. It's the third team foul against the Yukon Huskies. Here in the second half, Bob Bender, despite the travel of his Washington team, says he's seen no evidence in practices of fatigue setting in because they're young and they're running on adrenaline. And Luton fouled before the shot. Feels they're very mature. Nice back cut by Luton there. It's been the defense of UConn, Sean, that has stepped up and made it tough for Bob Bender. Offensively, I don't think they've been able to get the wall because of Jim Calhoun's defense to McCullough. Vosco bodying out. They're supporting when he fronts. They're occasionally doubling. It's been disturbing their offensive flow. McCullough. Well short with that shot. It just did touch the front rim. Ricky Moore using a Voskel screen. That was a two-point try. Rebounded by Jan Wooten. It's Jan Wooten, Donald Watts, Deion Luton, Chris Walcott, and Todd McCullough for Washington. Nice pass. Wooten to McCullough. Well, Wooten with a wonderful find. Nice penetration. The Jersey guy on the money. And McCullough has, has terrific hands, Sean. He's shown that all through the tournament. Brief breather for Colin Elamine, but he's about to come back into the ball game. In the moment, it's Moore, Jones, Freeman, Voskel, and Hardnett. Nice play. Short corner against the zone. Jones hit the deck hard, and they wanted to foul on McCullough. Watt steps into a three that wouldn't go down, and Hardnett rebounds. Do you know any other Monquencios? No. Nope. 
I don't need to play defense like he does. Now this zone, I thought, gave him a little trouble the last trip, a little short corner. They're forcing the outside shot. That's why they're trying to get Hamilton El Amin back in here. Watts goes down and plays the box and also has the top to cover. Freeman ran into a double team. Good patience by UConn, but now the shot clock is at five. Montrezio Hardnett. Nice read there. The penetration set it up. He got to the gap. The cue. The only scholarship senior on the Connecticut roster. Blocking foul called on Rochamel Jones. And Connecticut, the youngest team in the Big East, has a very bright future with this nucleus. How about the little pump fake sets it up and then the ability to get into the lane. And McCullough, that's something he doesn't do well. Step to help out. Femmeling in now, McCullough out maybe for that reason. A little fatigue, Bob Bender noting it. You can't go coast to coast without a turnover or two, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, we know what it's like to take a red eye on occasion. Emerling already a factor as he kept alive the miss by Luton. Walcott followed his own shot, and he came away from the pass with the ball. So great hustle by Chris Walcott. Brings a little juice to the floor for Washington. Watts, that's a shot that bothers a lot of coaches. He stepped right inside the line and then took the longest possible two-point try. Watts down the lane. Oh, yes! Well, you mentioned the jumper, and they know he can make it. It can draw people and slick saying, that's my son out there. With that maneuver, the only thing that upset him all year long was he shaved his head and slick didn't go for that. He didn't go for the headband, but boy, did he go for this little kid's semi-hook. Donald Watts, for those who haven't seen Washington play earlier in the tournament, is the son of Slick Watts, the former fine guard for the Seattle Sonics, who led the NBA in steals and assists in 1976. He's a very vocal supporter of his son and the rest of the Washington Huskies. Washington refuses to disappear. Now down five. Hardnett, very tough shot. Hamilton the save. And Walcott hit the floor to get it to Watts. Here's Luton for the dunk. And Watts in the middle of it. Anything good is generally Donald Watts. So out in Greensboro, the Washington Huskies will not go away. UConn has the lead, but it is three points and still plenty of time to play in the second half. Earlier today in Greensboro, North Carolina out-rebounded Michigan State 51-33 and won it by a score of 73-58. Nice little performance by the Tar Heels coach. It really was a great rebounding performance. That margin's a little misleading because they, they missed so many shots. But certainly Coach Guthrie has to be pleased with the defense as well. And pretty good performance by both Jameson and Carter today. When you look at North Carolina, the thing that's most impressive in addition to how they play is the fact they've got three guys that can take over games, Jamison, Carter, and Williams, and they all had strong offensive performances. So far, the uh, contest for the best game of the night was won by Utah and West Virginia. This was a pretty good ball game. Utah won it by a score of 65-62. Mountaineers made it tough on them, Clark. They really did. Their pressure defense forced a number of turnovers, but they didn't convert enough. Therefore, clutch free throw shooting by Utah ended up being the difference tonight. Utah won despite making no field goals in the last 11 minutes, 45 seconds of the game. This is what's on tap for tomorrow evening. Our coverage continues beginning at 7.30 Eastern time. Some will see Syracuse in the top seed, Duke in the south. Others will see Stanford against Purdue in the Midwest. Following that action, many of you will see UCLA take on the Kentucky Wildcats, while in the Midwest, the Cinderella's battle. 13th seed Valparaiso, 8th seed Rhode Island tomorrow on CBS. We will send you back to Anaheim for second half action right after this. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Field in the first half of play. So we begin the second half. And the Wildcats with the ball to begin. Credit a little bit of, uh, to Arizona's defense. They speed you up a little bit and make you do things you don't want to do on the offensive end. Well, here's an observation. Mike Bibby, if you're guarding him, I notice that he really doesn't break you down off the dribble. He passes, finds a spot, and then he beats you. Well, against his own so much, he's spotted up. But he's very good off the dribble, and he can beat you when he needs to. Dickerson partially blocked into the hands of Bramlett and a strong lay-in. 
Well, Prophet had the block and headed to the other end. Maryland didn't come up with that ball. Prophet inside a easy power dribble up and in and the foul. And a good sign for Obina Akizi. The statistics in the first half. The three-point shooting. Maryland 5 of 16. Arizona 4 of 9. Bibby was 4 of 4 himself. And the rebounding. Maryland with the advantage. Well, really the key is their shooting. 34%. This man, Akizi, did not have a field goal attempt in the first half. Had two personal fouls, only one point. But he is has to be a factor on the offensive end. Bramlett is third foul. Here's Bibby. They stay in that zone, and Bibby penetrates inside it, as Lee Olson mentioned. They have to get it off the dribble inside and then kick it out to the shooters. To Bibby, and he is fouled behind the three-point line by Profit, but the foul is on the floor. Smart play by Mike Bibby. Watch the fake, and now once he hears the whistle, it puts a shot up. Not many players do that in the college level. But they didn't uh, call that a shot attempt. Bibby again, double pumped inside. Our rebound goes to, well, it's out of bounds off of Arizona. They always talk about the first five minutes of this half. Maryland has to get something going, and as Gary Williams put, we got to get in sync. We have to get into a rhythm. Yes, the Cavages. Scoreless in the first half. Inside Elliott. Knocked out of bounds. Almost blocked by three Wildcats. When you take it inside, they all come. If you make a ball fake, watch the pass. Now, if there's one ball fake, look at the three Wildcats. They do not leave their feet until Elliott took off. And a steal. Davison. Stokes throwing it away. Maybe the other way. Weaving his way inside. Dickerson. <laughs> Good penetration, good pass. Dickerson kind of laid low along the baseline. Profit popping out. Inside, Elliott. Akizi to the basket, rebound Elliott again, and it's time he gets the layup. 46 to 37, 10 points for Rodney Elliott. Bramlett, and a pushing foul. His third. Take a look at Bibby surveying, watching, and Dickerson laid low again along the baseline. No help once he caught the basketball. So Abina Akizi leads with his third foul. He picked up two quick ones in the first half. Mike Martisic replaces him. And only three points on the evening live. I'll tell you what, you throw it anywhere close in the vicinity of the glass area. Davison seems to make the play. 35 inch vertical leap, six points for Bennett Davison. He's 6 8. Profit to Martison. Knocked out of bounds. And it is last touch by the Turks. Bob pass, Miles Simon right on the money. On the back door cut, someone better step in Davis's way so he can't get a free look to the basket. Bramlett pushed off. And Elliott with the board. Ahead, drop it. Crossover dribble, pull up jumper. Off balance, bad shot. And it's picked up by Davison. In the running jump shot and the roll. Well, you talked about his mid range game in the first half, Gus. That is a difficult shot. Sometimes you get your body gathered and can go up. That was on the run forward motion, and he got the touch. 17 04 to go in the second half, and the Wildcats starting to take over. Push up the floor, go get Bibby just surveying, trying to find out what's going on, but that is a difficult shot. The touch over the front of the rim. This is where Simon is at his best. Miles Simon in the first half of play, only six points as he allowed his backcourt mate 
Mike Bibby to control the game. There's Miles Simon's dad, Walt. Largest lead for Arizona, 50-37. Jam it. And he is fouled from behind and upset with himself that he doesn't get the three-point play. Terrific penetration by Stokes with the dribble. He gets in the lane and then the wraparound. But you know what? Dickerson makes a good play here. Put Elliott to the free throw line. Made a hard foul. Elliott's frustrated that he didn't finish this play. 69% free throw shooter. And the first is short. Rodney Elliott, one of two from the free throw line. Tonight, 10 points, four rebounds. Second one is good. 60 to 38. It allows Maryland with the, full, with the free throw made to get in their full court pressure, see if they can cross some turnover. Knocked out of bounds. Moran Crawford. Maryland, a very good pressing team, and during the season, they will press about everybody to up-temple the thing. They came into this ball game knowing they didn't want to get in the running match with Arizona. So they've been very selective at when they put the pressure on. It has not bothered the Wildcats. Wrapped it around inside. Davison, quick turn, and bingo. And Maryland, and talking to Gary Williams, they beat Kansas, they beat North Carolina when each team was ranked number one, but he could compare Arizona to Duke. Yeah, and they lost by 32 and by 27 to Duke, so when he said that, didn't feel like it bode well for his team that Arizona reminded him of the Duke squad. He said the reason is because they really don't run a lot of offensive motion. They're a catch-and-shoot team, one pass, and they're all good enough to score. Yes, the Cowboys has been a really quiet profit. Big basket because they have to have answers. The lob again, it's not stolen by Elliott. Maryland, three on two. Stokes, Crockett, squares up. Rebounded by Essa Cavages. He looks at the basket, got it away, and almost in. But he shoots three free throws. And, and maybe this will get Yessa Kavichis on the board. Hasn't scored 0-4. He was the hottest of the Maryland players coming into this ball game. Good ball fake, gets Bibby off the floor, then uses his body to get into him. But his last five ball games averaged nearly 18 points a game. Shot over 56%. Take a look at the free throws. Arizona, perfect Maryland, only three of six. But this is a guy, the first two games in the NCAA play was seven of nine beyond the three-point line and shooting 65% from the field. Sharonis Yesikavichin came to the United States his senior year from Lithuania. And he played in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And talking about a gym rat, his dad manages a basketball gym in Kaunas, his hometown. So he grew up sweeping the floor and shooting jump shots. Well, he's fearless. Terrific player when he first got to Maryland. So-so on defense and some errant passes. Didn't give him a lot of playing time, but over the years, he's developed into a pretty solid defender. Very good with the basketball. Outstanding outside shooter. Trying to get it to nine. Adds a free throw. 15.41 to go. Maryland trying to creep back in. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg in New York. 52-43 Arizona. We'll keep tabs on that game while we tell you what's happening between Washington and Connecticut in Greensboro. What's happening here is the Yukon Huskies can't shake the Washington Huskies. They really can't. Their defense hasn't disrupted the rhythm of the Washington Huskies, and this is a good offensive team, and they've scored quite well. Nine turnovers in the first half, only two for the Washington Huskies in the second half. We talked about El Amin and his big first half. We had 16 points. He's had just three in the second half. But his partner has stepped up. Rip Hamilton has 12 points in the second half, and that's the reason the Huskies are up four. It was just a one-point lead a moment ago, and Rip Hamilton knocked down the three. 
The Washington Huskies have never led in this game. Coming into this game, Clark, did you think this was a game that the Washington Huskies could win? If they avoided the spurts, which Connecticut can put together with their defense and were able to stay in an offensive rhythm, they're a good shooting team and they're a high-scoring team, and that's why they've been able to maintain contact. Winner of this game plays North Carolina on Saturday. We'll keep an eye on this game for you, but right now let's return you to Anaheim, Arizona, and Maryland. Gus Johnson and John Sunbold. 52-43, Maryland, they've trailed by as many as 12, trying to get on a run, and they can do it with easy baskets, count the bucket, and the foul for the profit. Good backdoor cut, good delivery by Elliott. Maryland a step quicker this second half, more energy on the offensive glass, and they get some more attempts. The backdoor cut, the foul by Terry. The excitement by Profit. So LaRon Profit, who's been in the shooting slump, has 16 points, trying to add to the totals, and he gets the free throw. And here comes Maryland, 52-46. Bibby. Maryland on an 8-0 run. Arizona, no problem with the pressure, but Maryland gets back to that zone, and it has bothered this Wildcat team. Davison and a foul. Armin, what do you have? You know, Gus, you might wonder watching the game why Arizona doesn't call timeouts on situations like this when a team gets a run. And I spoke with Coach Olson yesterday, and he said it's because of Bibby and Simon. They're so good now, so experienced. They're almost self-correcting on the court. They just make these decisions just about the time he says he's going to do something. He sees them do the thing exactly what he wants them to do on the court, so he doesn't call the timeout. Back to you. All right, Armin Davison missing the free throw. Mike Bibby, 18 first half points. And it stays at 18. He has not scored in the second half. 14.53 to go. Rodney Elliott is fourth. Second free throw for Davison is good. Fifty-three to forty-six. Back door. Profit off the glass and a whistle. Looks like Akizi will pick up his fourth personal foul with a block trying to set a back pick. And Akizi quickly comes out of the game. Take a look up top. Akizi now when he extends his arms. Boy, that with all the activity that's going on in this ball game. Wow. Tough call for Maryland. That's a bad call. Barely grazed the defensive player, and Akizi sits down with four. Maryland back in the zone. Well, Arizona has not penetrated this zone by the dribble or by the passes around that free throw. If you get it in that free throw line area, you already have the zone stretched out far enough. It'll create a lot more opportunity. Bibby, he finally missed the three. Tip. Bibby again. Simon for three. And another offensive rebound. Bibby tried to lay it off. Out of bounds. And Maryland gets it back. Wildcats not making jump shots. Maryland's got to feel comfortable. Down by seven, 53-46, 14.08 to go. Profit around the screen, ball fake, kicked away by Bibby. Here come the Cats on the break, Terry back to Bibby. Off the glass, it's in, plus the five. And it counts. Sharing the basketball on the break, and Jason Terry waited for the last second to give it back to Mike Bibby. Bibby's active hands knocks it away from Profit, and here they come. Again, you make it a two-on-one. Gives it right back. Look at this ball hang around. Maryland wanted offensive goaltending, but it wasn't even close. For the contact, look how softly this ball falls in. Three guards running the break for you. Finishing strong, Bibby at the line. And he has the free throw. There's Virginia. The young man is doing very well tonight. 21 for him. 56 to 46. The lead grows to 10. Kovarik over the line. Lays it up. Came up short. And a, lo a loose ball foul inside against Arizona. Donnell Harris caught, caught with a push underneath. Profit 
Ludwig takes the seat. Morris back into the game, along with Stokes. Elliott on the floor, Martisic and Kovar. For Maryland. Down by 10. Have to look now for Elliott to do something in the offensive end. Elliott, let it go. Got it! 56-49. Right on cue, profit out. You have to look for the next guy that can score points. Harris got the step on the baseline. And Elliott with the rebound. Elliott wants it. Big offensive possession for Maryland. Martison. And it's snatched down by Davison. You see a difference on Maryland going to the offensive board. Great rebound by Davison because Elliott and Morris were after the ball. Kyle Simon. 12.55 to go, 56-49. Martisic. Morris, and he throws it away. Bibby. Look at the ball move. Terry. Short. Rebound, Martisic. Maryland, two straight trips. Not good possession. Martis says forced the one shot, then he made a turnover. Again, look for your leaders. Look for Elliott off the screen. Stokes. And he got it in. That's a shooter's roll, folks. 56-52. 12-13 to go. Maryland clawing their way back into this one. Davidson and a foul. Terrell Stokes comes off the top, knocks it in. Maryland on a 14-4 run. Look at the touch of the shot. A little more excitement now on the Maryland bench. And this is when you wonder, the number one seeds begin to feel a little bit of pressure. Saw it last week with Kansas. Gary Williams, look at that reaction. Players off the bench. And a short free throw by Bennett Davison. And the confidence of Arizona had across their face is no longer there. Gus, it uh, doesn't appear that they're, appear that they're just as confident as they were about five minutes ago. Davis at one of three from the free throw line, 56 to 52. Maryland still by as many as 14. Second one is good. And a substitution, Eckerson into the game. Davison sits down. And Arizona sets up the full court press. Kovarik flashing to the basketball. And they get it in the hands of Stokes. Kovarik, Elliott, elevates, got it! 57-54. Find your senior, let him take over. He's got 16. Terry the other way, blocked from behind. Into the hands of Elliott. And we've got a ball game, folks. Good decision by Stokes. You slow it down, get it set again. Elliott and Prophet are the guys you're looking for. Kovar. Stokes, big three. Bibby become more involved on the offensive end. Dickerson. And Stokes. Tapped out by Elliott. 10.53 to go. 57-54 Arizona. They've led by as many as 14. Look how spread the floor is. The lanes are open to drive it for cutting. Kind of the old flex offense. Inside, Stokes back there, and it's in! Great back pick by Prophet, good delivery by Morris, and the layup by Stokes. And the Maryland Terrapins have refused to die, their fans on their feet, a 12 by one, and Lou Olsen needs a timeout. The old flex offense, keeping the lane open in the spread, you want to set some back picks. Look how spread this floor is as they cut through the lane. Watch this screen up top of the right. The pick 
wide open to Stokes and Morse put it right on the money. The easy layup and the excitement in this building now for the Maryland Terrapins. And the Terps, as Gary Williams said, they've outscored Arizona 16-5. In one game, he tells his teams, you can beat anybody. It's not the NBA where it's the best out of seven, but in one basketball game, you can beat anybody. That's how he fires his squad up. Last goal miss from Valparaiso. Ask those ball club. They understand this situation. Dickerson strong in the basket. Boy, what an answer by Michael Dickerson. Strong and acrobatic. The Cavages guarded by Dickerson. Look at that lane area open. Wide open. Elliott cuts to the basket, and he missed. No foul call. Simon the other way, and the layup is good. Two answers after the 22nd timeout, and now Gary Williams wants a 22nd timeout. The two seniors have answered. 9.45 to go, Arizona on top, 61 to 56. A Wildcat starting to go to the basket strong. And the game reset. Neither team in bonus shooting. Six fouls against six and five fouls, rather. And the Wildcats lead it 61 to 56. Maryland had got as close as 57 to 56. And against this man-to-man -man defense, back door, Maryland has picked apart in the last five minutes this defense. Yes, the Cavatrice is first open look at it short. Inside, and Simon has it stripped away. Or good hands by Morris, a freshman. The Cavages around the screen. Kicks it out. Morris, the freshman. In and out. And a whistle and foul inside. Against the Turks. And look at the foul trouble. Elliott with four, Akizi with four, and Martisic with four. And now Arizona in the one and one. Dickerson goes to the foul line, 76% free throw shooter. There's Akizi on the bench, Dickerson at the line. Akizi, who we thought had to be a big factor, has been a non-factor because of foul problems. Boy, that was way short. Well, Dickerson also has been quiet, averaging 18 points a game. He has eight. Stokes around the screen of the hole, rejected by Dickerson. Makes up for it on the defensive end. He gets it back and out of bounds. Not a good pass by Miles Simon. You have possession of the basketball. Too far ahead, but watch defensively. Helping out. Took it right at the glass. 61 to 56. Arizona. And out of bounds. And in that offensive set, Gus, the wing players have to get out more on the wing so the lane's open. Everybody congested that time. Sloppy ball handling. Once they got it to one point, Arizona's answered. But Maryland not getting good shot attempts the last few possessions. Dickerson to the basket, and he got a good shot. And the foul. Dickerson and Simon have now started making a lot harder cuts to the hoop. Dickerson aggressive, Simon with the pass right on the money. They look at how hard they're cutting. That pass is firm, the left, the finish. And Rodney Elliott has fouled out of this ball game. What a blow to Maryland. Rodney Elliott leaves with 16 points, the senior from Baltimore. Terrific performance by him. But as you mentioned, John, a huge loss for the Turks. One of your go-to players. Obviously, Prophet and Elliott are the guys you're looking for to score points, and you take him away with 8.19 on the clock. 
Yes, a Kavichus is a guy, Gus, that has to knock in shots. Can't get open there. Well, and when he's open, he's missing. Oh, a zero of six from the field, two of three from the foul line. It's Dickerson. This time the free throw is pure. 64-56. Seven straight points by Arizona. Morris. Hardison. Greg Dumble in New York will keep you up to date on what happens between Maryland and Arizona, but in what has become a watchword of this tournament, we have a tight finish in progress. In Greensboro, two-point game. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery are there. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery, Andrea Joyce at the Greensboro Coliseum. 44 seconds left. Connecticut leads by two. Washington has not had the lead at any point in this game. Connecticut down to one timeout. And in the double bonus, and the arrow also favors Washington. The Huskies' biggest deficit was nine, but just more than ten minutes remaining. Well, they got the two big guys in. they got to use them. Do a high-low. Otherwise, it jams it up unless they pick and roll with the bounce. They go for Luton on a double. Donald Watts. Watch the answer. High voltage, Washington. A tradition unlike Maybe. any other. The Masters yes, on CBS. Sir. Who are you? I was hired by your roommate. Well, out of my way, I want a Bud Light. I don't think. Washington took its first lead seconds ago. 74-73, 29 seconds left. Donald Watts, the huge three. Now Connecticut is out of timeout, so they must inbound the ball cleanly here. And they do to El Amin. He likes to dribble drive using a high post pick. Hamilton off the basketball, get himself set. One for Sean, try and turn the corner. Spreading the court for El Amin. Ten seconds remaining. El Amin off to Bosco. He was blessed. The shot wouldn't drop. Hamilton! No! Another tip! No! Hamilton!
for almost the entire game. And they were a split second away from advancing. Their season ends at 20 and 10 in the Sweet 16. And Connecticut advances to Saturday and the Elite Eight. The difference between happiness and heartache. Happiness for UConn, they advance. Washington suffers the heartbreak, 75-74. Let's get you back to Anaheim. Gus Johnson and John Sunvold with Maryland and Arizona. 5-18 remaining in the second half, 68-61. Pop it to the basket. Marnas hits with the rebound and stick back. So every time you think Maryland is out of this game, they do something to get back in it. Last two possessions, Arizona has chased each other. And the fact is, Maryland has now beaten them off the dribble to the hoop and to the rim. Laurent Profit with 18 points. Davison, and he leads in, makes it home. Well, how quickly Davison catches and makes his move. Doesn't wait for any double teams. Goes high over Akizi. Four fouls stayed away from him. 70-63. Five to go, 70-63. Arizona, the number one seed. And Maryland, the number four seed out west. The winner plays Utah for a trip to the final four. Profit. Lost it. Yes, the Cavish has got it away at a foul. He shoots three. The effect of a jump shooter. Once he catches, all you have to do is raise the ball to the rim. The recovery by Simon. There's the ball fake. Get him up in the air. Yes, Akavisis will go foul line for three, where he is two of three from the free throw line tonight. And our bracket in the West. Utah advanced by holding on to beat West Virginia. They await the winner of this game. Yes, Akavisis' first free throw is strong. He's a 76% free throw shooter and tonight he's two of four tough night shooting the basketball for this young man you shake it off you have 407 left though get your stroke going right here on the foul line Sharunas Yesikavichis from Lithuania as Davison checks out Jason Terry back into the game second free throw is good 407 to go, 70-65. And the brackets in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Connecticut advances on a Richard Hamilton buzzer beater. They play each other on Saturday. Rip Hamilton has done it all year long for that squad. Should be a great matchup. Simon for three. Oh, he got it. Since Maryland got it to win one point, it's been Simon, it's been Dickerson, the two seniors who have extended this lead back now to eight. Profit popping out on the wing. Got the screen from McKeezy. Eggerson hedges out. They reverse it. Stokes in deep. Hands it to Kavar. 15-footer drained it. Well, how about Kavar? Does not shoot the ball much. Caught one there. Maryland has stayed in this 3-2 zone since about the 10-minute mark of the first half. At Kavar, fifth-year senior from Greensboro. And they just saw a really exciting game in Greensboro. Bibby, 14 on the shot clock. Bibby, wide open. Can't do that. Man, unbelievable. Five of six from three-point lane. He has 24, 76-67. Akizi, inside, turn, shoots. And Bramlett with the rebound. Good solid block out. Marquise, tough night, only one of four. Gus, he had the foul trouble, has not been in there enough to get established on the offensive end, only three points. And Arizona determined to milk the clock a bit. 14 to shoot, Terry. Terry, Simon, and Bibby, the guys that can knock it in from outside. Eight on the shot clock, Terry, crossover dribble. Simon deep in the corner, yeah! perfect run the clock down Simon comes off one screen two screen Terry puts it on the money and Simon answers again 
2-12 to go. Arizona taking charge 79 to 67. Only 35%. And Mike Bibby with 24 points. Maryland, a team that shoots nearly 47 from the field on the year, has struggled getting the ball in the hole tonight. Akizi across the lane, blocked from behind by Bramley. Simon rejected. Dickerson got it back in East by. Akizi will pick up his fifth. Personal. Keezy trying to get his game on track and the great block by Bramlett. Then the break and Miles Simon kind of figures he has one. The freshman Morris gets it away and there's the body contact, the foul. Fifth person, personal. Robina Keezy, tough night. Three points, three rebounds. Foul trouble really since the get go. Martisic prepares to check in, and Mike Dickerson at the line for two. Michael Dickerson, what a hard worker this young man is. We're shooting free throws in the gym on New Year's Eve because at midnight, he wanted to be the first player practicing for the Arizona program. Pitch is 375 pounds. Second free throw is good. 80 to 67, under two minutes to play. And Maryland now has to quicken the pace on the offensive end. Profit inside, Martisic. Now let's check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. And it's turnover. Maryland with 17, Arizona with 12. Well, Arizona forces 20 turnovers a ball game. They're a team that gets into you with their quickness. And Maryland normally forces a lot, but one thing they've sat, they've played the zone. Tonight, since about the 10-minute mark in that first half, they've gone to 3-2 zone and stayed in it. So Arizona has not had as many. Martisic getting the first free throw to go. 145 remaining in the second half. The winner moves on and plays Utah. Second one is good also. 80-69. The 2-2-1 full court pressure. Bibby very good with the basketball, as is Simon. Tough team to press. Simon penetrates, ball fake. Dickerson rebound, and it is shot clock. And it's kicked by Yessa Cavages. Well, Dickerson had a little pirouette through there, and Yes didn't travel. Fresh 35 on the clock. Arizona can milk this one away. 118 to go. Arizona, the number one seed. Well, right, you better file. You have to chase and do something. Make the Wildcats make a bunch of free throws because this uh, this game will run out if you do this. Mike Bibby bounce past Davison, and he's fouled on the block. <laughs> and a full schedule for you tomorrow. Syracuse, Duke, Stanford, Purdue, UCLA, Kentucky, and Valpo, and Rhode Island. Well, how about that? Stanford, Purdue is going to be a, a game nobody talks about. Everybody mentions everybody, the Cinderella's this and that, but Gene Cady's team is physical and tough. How about the matchup, UCLA and Kentucky? Up and down the court, Gus. Unfortunately, Baron Davis, the mm -hmm. prolific freshman point guard, out of the line up for the remainder of the season because of a torn knee ligament. And Lou Olson told us today that he thought UCLA with Baron Davis was as explosive as any team that wanted to get up and down the court. And Davison with the first free throw and the, the big game that everybody is talking about. The two Cinderella's URI and Valpo. Well, it'll be a great guard matchup. Wheeler 
Matina Mobley. The fact that they have to uh, find a way to shut down Bryce Drew in his jump shot. Inside, Crawford under a minute to go. He's fouled and heads to the line. Well, that's what you want if you're Maryland. Quick hits up the floor inside. Profit goes to the foul line. But it's going to have to be a lot of fouls in Arizona to miss free throws for these Terrapins to get back in. Two guys. Two. So Leron Profit, 17 points. He's also got 10 rebounds. And the first one is off. Well, Maryland cut this lead to one, and it was the seniors that answered in this second half by Arizona. First Dickerson, and then Simon. And then Mike Bibby just took control of the basketball. He's been solid all night, 24 points, five rebounds, four assists, and four steals. And Profit misses both, and Kovara commits the foul. I remember last year, folks, it was Arizona celebrating in Indianapolis as they knocked off Kentucky in overtime and cut down the nets at the RCA Dome. The question is, can they get back to that same spot and become the first team since Duke in 91-92 to win back-to-back -back national championships? It's a confident team, but I think there's a feeling that the players and the coaching staff don't get the respect nationwide. The coaching staff feels, hey, we're west of the Mississippi. We don't get the attention as Duke and North Carolina, and the players feel that way. They still feel they're an underdog, and that's a good feeling to go in. So Bramlett trying to add to the totals, and it's rebounded inside. 83 to 69, under 50 seconds to play. Morris, and he bangs home the three. Maybe the other way, a reach-in foul called against Laurent Crawford with 41.3 seconds remaining. Mike Bibby will try to add to his totals. What a ball game he's had. That first half was spectacular. 18 points, 4 of 4 from three-point land. Mike Bibby, and he's off the mark. Finally, he shows some signs of being human. Virginia. Second and short as well. Eighty-three, seventy-two. Morris around the screen, and he hit another one. Eighty-three, seventy-five. Yeah, well, the freshman stroke is pretty good right now. Simon and the whistle. <laughs> And Gary Williams talked yesterday about the fact that we have to shoot well to be in this ball game, and it's been a night. They shoot 36% from the field. They picked it up the second half, still coaching, instructing some of the younger players for Rodney Elliott. This will be his last ball game in a Maryland uniform. But they didn't make the shots when they had to early. And then it was an uphill battle against a team like Arizona. Kyle Simon with the first. And if you look at Miles, he, he doesn't have the shaved head like he had last year during the Final Four run. His teammates want him to shave his head, but uh, according to my sources, his girlfriend <laughs> won't allow him to do it. She said, no, not this time, buddy. You're keeping your hair. It looks better. Morris again for three. And it's dipped in with 11.8 to go. 85 to 77, a steal. Morris tries to jam it and comes up short. But there's no quit in the Terrapins. We are still playing, still trying to get some activity. In the missed dunk. Terrific season though for Gary Williams. As we mentioned, they upset the number one Kansas. They beat North Carolina. And the free throw by Bibby is good. And right now, yes, Kavichis and Miles Simon having some words on the free throw line. Miles Simon telling yes, Kavichis to be quiet and go back to College Park. Second one is good also. 87-77.
Bogdanovich straight to the basket. But that will do it. Good matchup, Gus, for us on Saturday. Utah with their size against the speed of Arizona. Arizona, they keep their national championship hopes alive with an 87-79 win over Maryland. And the bracket in the West, it's come down to two. The number one seeded Arizona Wildcats and the three seed Utah. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Rodney Elliott from Maryland, 16 points, six rebounds, and Michael Bibby, 18 points in the first half. He finished with 26 and five rebounds. So Arizona plays on. The season comes to an end for Maryland. They finish 22 and 11. Coming up, Greg Gumbo in New York with Clark Kellogg and Gene Smith. For John Sunbo, Gus Johnson, so long for from Anaheim. I'm already Anaheim, John Sunvold with head coach Lute Olson and a couple of happy Wildcat guards. John. Greg, thank you, and I do have Miles Simon, Mike Bibby, but uh, Lute Olson first to you. Pretty close ball game the second half, but uh, the veteran leadership uh, extended that lead the, uh, when you needed it. Yeah, they did a nice job. Uh, Maryland did a great job in their zone defense. They spread out and really bothered us uh, some, and, and uh, at halftime we said we've got to make that wing cut into the middle because we had them so spread out and see if we couldn't attack them inside. Uh, and Miles and, and uh, Michael Dickerson did, did a good job of finding those people. Thank you. Uh, good luck Saturday. Thanks a lot. Now let's go. Miles Simon, the ball game got within one point. Uh, interesting fact is uh, you didn't just kind of took over yourself. I just tried to make something happen. Uh, I think one time I got a rebound, went coast to coast, and, and just anything to try to spark the team. What do you think? Uh, did you see Utah play in the, in the game before you guys? Yeah, I saw Utah a little bit. Your thoughts? You know, they're real big. Hopefully, you know, we can just use our quickness to break them down. Well, good luck Saturday. All right, Let thanks. me move over to your teammate, Mike Bibby. Mike, you had a hot start the first half. Looked like you were looking for your shot a little bit early. Yeah, I mean, once I started to hit my first, I mean, Coach, Coach Les is shooting. If we're open, he's shooting. Nice shot. How about Saturday? Miles Simon mentioned Utah's a big squad. Did you get a chance to see them play? I saw a little bit. I was really in the locker room a lot. I mean, we know it's going to be a tough game. We're going to work hard in practice tomorrow and get prepared for them. Thanks a lot. Good luck, sir. Terrific ball game. Thank you. Let's go back now to Greg Gumbel. All right, John, thanks very much. So the Pac-10 now 9-1 and one in this tournament so far. You know, Arizona coach distinguished themselves in this game, unlike some other teams, not only held their composure when the opponents got close, but then actually kicked into gear. They surely moved quickly on that to that timeout. You have to give Maryland credit for a gallant effort. And I know you say, hey, watch Arizona. They can kick it into gear in all phases of their game. They defend and they can knock down the three-point shot. They also can beat you off the dribble. Multiple weapons and they do it when they need to. All right, if you're joining us late, shame on you. Another buzzer beater in the tournament. We'll show that to you and uh, talk to the winners and losers when we come back in just a moment. One floor shot, try and turn the corner. And spreading the court for El Amin. Ten seconds remaining. El Amin off the Bosco. He was blessed. The shot wouldn't drop. Yet another buzzer beater in this tournament. That is how Connecticut defeated Washington tonight. Victory for the Huskies, a loss for the Huskies. You guys had some questions as to how Connecticut approached that final shot. Well, first of all, a great college basketball game, but I think Clark and I both thought, well, maybe they would move quickly instead of holding it for 10 seconds to go in. And Coach Calhoun was right because they didn't get a chance to get it back and go down and beat him. Right. Better. I would say he was lucky because I think anytime you're in that situation, you've got.
got to try to make a play early on. So you give yourself a chance for a second shot. They actually got multiple shots there. But if they hadn't made the shot, then they wouldn't have had time to foul to extend the game. And that would have been my, my strategy. But I've never coached. So. All right, guys. Meanwhile, uh, you may have seen one of the Connecticut Huskies on the floor at game's end. That was Kevin Freeman. We want to let you know that he was suffering from stomach cramps and dehydration at the end of the game. He was helped off the court, and he appears to be doing fine. Meanwhile, Coach Jim Calhoun, the victorious coach, and he and Rip Hamilton, he of the game-winning shot, chatted with Andrea Joyce. Richard Hamilton with the winning shot at the buzzer. Was that the biggest shot of your life? I think so. You know, I dream of making a, a buzzer beater. I never made a buzzer beater in my whole life, man. Happy to do it right now. Well, this is the place to do it. I know that you haven't been feeling well. You've been sick, but it didn't seem to slow you down in the second half. You know, I think uh, Coach Calhoun and Coach Hobbs told me, you know, this could be the last 20 minutes of my season, uh, of my sophomore year. And he said that you got to go out here and give it all. And that's what I think I did. And go home now and get a little bit of rest. Coach, congratulations. How much did this one take off your life? Well, it took quite a bit, but uh, our kids are courageous at the end. I thought I thought that the Washington did a wonderful job of staying with us and wouldn't let themselves get detached. We had like eight, seven, eight, nine, seven, and we don't trail till there's 30 seconds to go. And then uh, we came back, and we must have got five, six tips. We were not going to lose. Of course, Richard made the the final one. And your reward now, you face North Carolina in North Carolina. How do you get your kids ready for the hostile well, environment? I really I can't wait to get out here on Saturday night. And I know it's going to be tough, and I know they're a great basketball team, but we're 40 you know 40 minutes away from a Final Four. They're great basketball team and they're the best team in the country the best team I've seen but uh, I think we'll show up at six and, and give it our best and we have great respect for the North Carolina program and their kids but uh, we're pretty excited about trying to play them on Saturday night we're, we're alive never been in the final four is this the year well it could be we're 40 minutes away and uh, you know I said we're gonna be knocking on that door it looks like we're knocking again all right good luck on Saturday thanks a lot Meanwhile, uh, this game marked the sixth one-pointer of this tournament. That is the most in the tournament since 1990. And oddly enough, Connecticut experienced a buzzer-beating victory in that game as well. The Huskies were down to Clemson, 70-69. to There was one second left on the clock. Here's how it finished. Now we're ready to go. Here goes the long pass with one second to go. The shot. Jim Calhoun was on the winning end. Oddly enough, two days later, Connecticut was beaten at the buzzer by Christian Leitner and Duke. We'll take a timeout, and when we come back, we'll hear from the losing coach in that game, Bob Bender of the Washington Huskies, as we continue in just a moment. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. The Late Show with David Letterman and Dave's guests include actor Pierce Brosnan and comedian Brian Regan that's coming up next here on CBS. Let's recap the bracket situation. First of all, in the West, Arizona and Utah have advanced to meet on Saturday, Clark. I imagine a number of people have this matchup just as it looks right there. Arizona, their speed, probably too much for Utah to handle, I think. In the East, North Carolina has advanced to play the University of Connecticut. Coach, your thoughts on that? I forecast another buzzer beater. <laughs> oh, thanks, we like that. Okay. All right, the other uh, games involved in the South, Duke, Syracuse, and then UCLA, Kentucky. Some of the action that you will see tomorrow here on CBS. 19 national championships among those teams in that region alone. And in the Midwest, Cinderella's Rhode Island and Valparaiso will play in one game. Stanford and Purdue in the other. It all gets started 7.30 Eastern time here on CBS Friday. We will look for you then. For Clark Kellogg and Dean Smith and for all of us here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you later on.